What is up everybody? It's Kristen and I have another video for you on how to deal with calling multiple functions in your C++, C++ code. So let's go over the first thing first. Let's just go over what I've actually put together here. Uh, I was able to put together a video game, just a simple video game, to illustrate how to call multiple functions. And you can see that there's some similarities to this with your project one. So use this for ideas on how to build function calls and uh, use return values from functions as well. So just like with our project one, notice that I am not doing much in my main. I have a points total integer, which I am going to store the return result from my function hub. So function hub is going to call a bunch of other functions and it's going to accumulate points for the video game. And when the player reaches 100 points, they have won the game. So the idea is that whatever total comes back from our other function will get stored in points total because the fun hub function call will be the place where total will be returned to. All right, so let's go over our fun hub function. So notice that I've got a couple of different integers and strings and Boolean values here to make this function work. I've got um, a total which is gonna be returned to main. I have a menu choice based on what someone wants to choose in the menu. I have a gambling score, which comes back from a gambling function, and a score chance, which comes from every other function. So total gets set to score chance from every different chance roll. So the first thing I wanted to point out here is this is how to set up an alternative while loop from some that you might have seen so far in class, notice that what we have here is a boolean variable called flag, which is set to false. And the flag, while false, will make the while loop continue. Now notice here that if I have the user enter q or q, then the flag gets set to true, which then breaks the boolean conditions of our while loop parameters and I will return the total so far. So I have a, another function call here. This is the first function call that's done inside of a function. So inside of this function funhub, I'm going to call a menu function with this line here on line 92. Notice that it is the name of the actual function and then parentheses. Every time you call a function, uh, the way that it's recognized as a function is through the parentheses addition to the variable. And menu, if we go up here and look at menu, we'll notice that menu does not take any parameters and it's a void function. So all it's going to do is just print some stuff and then we're going to return back to main to where this menu was called on line 92. So Here's where I'm gathering the choice from the menu. It's either one, two, or three. And get line, which is a different version of CN, grabs anything on a line, and it's really useful. Um, and you'll see it a lot start to come up in future projects, especially when you're working with strings. Now, notice that I want to do an integer here, but M choice is a string. So what I am doing here is I am converting the string m choice to an integer and I am storing it in an integer variable called menu choice. I then check to see if that integer that got stored in menu choice is one, two, or three. Uh, if it is one, we're going to store the value of a function call into score chance. So here, if the choice is one, we will then go up to our function called chance num. Ch 
chatsnub is an integer function that returns a role, which is an integer. Now, some of you might have wanted to know how to use um, a seeded random value, and this is how you do it. Um, what you do is you, you generate a random seed using SRAN time null, and null PTR is standard for C++11. Um, you could also write null this way, and it would work just fine. Uh, here, we're going to store the random value between 1 and 100 into chance roll. Now, this is usually, you, can, you consider this number as the maximum value in a range, and this the minimum value in a range. And that's how RAND works, is that you modulo on the max value plus the min value, if you were interested. Now we're going to output some message about what was rolled, and we're going to return that roll back to main. And notice that I'm returning a value, so whatever gets returned to main gets stored into score chance every time that one is chosen. So this could continuously happen, and chance num could keep adding to score chance because of the plus equals. So if we choose two, if menu choice becomes two, then we're going to call our display function. And notice that display is a function that requires a variable. So we're passing score chance, which is our total score so far, Here's the display function, which takes in an integer. And you can see here that it's actually a different name than the one that was actually passed in here. Well, in C++, C++ as long as you have the same variables in your parameters, in your function calls and in your, your function prototypes, uh, your, your functions will recognize those as the same variables. They see it as a, it only needs one integer. And so whatever you declare, uh, even if it's a different name, as long as it is an integer, it will assume that value to be the same and store it in there. So whatever value from score, whatever value from score chance that's passed into display here, so say you've been rolling one or you've been rolling three, both of which add to your points total, if you choose two, you're going to pass that points total to display, and display is going to actually print out exactly what your current score is. And current score will be the same as score chance. Okay, our last option in our menu, if choice is three, we're going to store the function call of the gamble function into a variable called g points, which is an integer. So if I go up here to gamble, this is probably the most complex function in this code. What we're going to do here is we're going to generate a random number and store it into g points, just like before. Now, what I've done here is I'm checking in a range for if g points is a certain value. So here I'm saying, OK, if we generate a random number between 25 and 1, if that number comes out less than or equal to 5, then we're going to modify the return points that we're going to give the player or subtract from the player's points totals. And we're going to give them some kind of a print statement. So we're updating return points in all of these different conditions based on what randomly gets generated and stored into G points. So here, if it's less than or equal to 5, points are reduced by a certain amount between 19 and 1 points. Otherwise, if it's greater than 5 but less than or equal to 10, we're going to uh, increase points between 20 and 29 points for that turn. And the same here, we decrease by between 30 and 39 if the roll comes back greater than 10 or less than or equal to 20. And otherwise, if it's greater than 20, so if it's 21 to 25, which, which would be the hardest to actually roll out of the everything here, we're going to give them a whopping some range between 40 and 50 points back. And remember, you have to get 100 points in order to win the game. So that's a general overview of 
what this gain is. The last thing here is that if our total reaches 100 or exceeds it, you've won the game. So we'll set total to 100 and we'll just return that value to our main. And notice here that when we return total, we will store it in our function call funhub in points total and output it as the last thing we do before the end of our function. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so first of all, yes, let's go ahead and play. Please select one of the following menu options. Okay, let's see how many points we have. Well, we don't have any points yet. Let's see what else we can do. So notice that whenever I display the menu, I am saying thank you for visiting this function. That means that, that function call worked correctly. And here we scored 41 randomly from going to chance num. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and gamble and go to function 3. Ah, uh -huh. we didn't have a very good day, so we lost some points. So let's see where we're at. So we're at 29 points. So notice that we can keep playing until we actually get 100 points. So since 29 plus 88 exceeded 100, we've won the game. And that's just a general overview right there of how to call functions within functions. I hope this was informative and I hope it helps with your project. All right, guys, I will see y'all later.